working with excel files very important to know how to work with excel files nothing but i can say file handling in python why we need to work with excel files like excel files we need to work with databases as well why why there is a need see up to now we have written the test cases and in the test cases what you have done if you want to log in into any particular website you have statically mentioned username and password in the script itself likewise if there is any such test script where that needs data for doing some validations where you will specify data we will specify that data in excel files and in some cases we will specify that data nothing but test data in databases as well if we want to execute the same test case suppose if you assume that this is a test case which we have written i can say it is nothing but a test script whether it is a manual or automation test script if i want to execute that same test case with multiple sets of data multiple times every time i used to execute this particular script with different sets of data then i can say that testing is called as data driven testing what i am doing i am just testing any particular website with different sets of data to know what are the issues even i can find so every time you need to test any web application with different sets of data if you set or if you test the same website with only the same data test data every time it is nothing but exhaustive testing with the help of exhaustive testing you will not be able to find different bugs or different issues in the application so every time when you test the application you need to test with different test data that process or that testing is called as data driven testing at the end of the day you need data so what you will do you will specify that data in some place so that place could be an excel file or in the database so working with excel files and working with databases we should be aware of in this particular class we'll discuss how we can work with excel files and once after we know that how to work with excel files then we will do data driven testing how we can fetch the data from the excel files how i can pass the same data to any automation script very important so before going to work with excel files some basic things you need to be aware of so basically excel files we store test data and use same test data now test cases the test data may vary according to your requirement this time you can specify one one type of test data some another time if you need that you know that test data which i provided earlier is not sufficient for me i want to replace that yes you can also replace that existing files in excel and in order to work with excels in python we are having two libraries one it open py excel library and pandas library you can use any one of them i will be discussing about open py excel in my today's class but coming to pandas yes i have given in the material so that you just practice
yes that is very important very important interview questions what are the file handling or excel file handling libraries in python you can straight away say open by excel and you can also say pandas see pandas library is more of data analysis or data engineering works very important but for doing some little operations what you can do you can specify the test data in excel and you can use open by excel library very important before going to work with excel files you need to know the schema you should know the schema an excel file will have multiple workbooks and every workbook will have sheets which we will be seeing on every day basis whenever you are working with excel files you will get to know excel file will have workbooks and every workbook will have sheets and every sheet will have rows and columns so ultimately each row is having a cell then what are the different type of operations i can perform on excel files i can count how many number of rows and columns present yes reading the data from rows and columns and reading specific column data if you want to write the data into multiple cells you can write whether it is same data or multiple data so these are the operations which you can perform only two operations nothing but reading and writing so for reading data in the open by excel library we have this format so in the sheet anyway excel file will have workbook and works workbooks will have sheets in the sheet you have cell and for that cell you need to specify row value and column value it will try to fetch the value if you specify dot value in the sheet i have cells in the cell i have value you can read the data from the cell like this yes if you want to write the data you can write the data it is opposite in the sheet you can specify that cell and what is the value which you want to write this is same as like this if you reverse this then writing and reading operations will be happen this is what about open by excel for your understanding how you can achieve the same operations using pandas library i have specified in the material go through that material and take that as an assignment go to pycharm create a directory of day 32 and in the day 32 create a python file of handling excel files this is a python module so for working with excel files you should have open by excel or pandas library we'll only discuss about open by excel right now so it is a library you need to import that library before importing you need to install that library so yes what i will do i will just import import open by excel open by excel this is the library if i want to work with excel files i can use this open by excel library yes if you see here it is highlighting with red means there is no module or library in your pycharm installed open by excel so what you can do you can go to terminal here and you can use pip install open py excel if you want to install any library in python not only open py excel any library you can use this command pip install and you specify that library and if there is version if you want a specific version you can specify that version here like this but right now i don't want any version i want the latest version if i specify only that library name or the module name it will install 
latest version. This is one way of installing any library. You can also install install Selenium from here. Pip install Selenium. But what we have done in the previous classes, we have gone to file settings and in the interpreter, in the project, you will have interpreter. In the interpreter, we have just installed Selenium. In the same way, you can install here. I want open by Excel. This is the library. And if you want version, you can specify. Right now, I want the latest version. So I'm just clicking install package. Once I click install package, it will be automatically installed. You can close and click on OK. Before clicking on OK, you can see that you know you will be having open by Excel with the latest version available. Yes. After installing from terminal or from project interpreter, you can see the trademark has been gone. As discussed, every Excel file will have workbook. Every workbook will have multiple sheets. Every sheet will have rows and columns. Whether it is a row or whether it is a column, it is having cells. So ultimately, in order to work with Excel files, I need to specify Excel file location. So what I'm doing, I can just specify the file location. So if you see here, I am not having any file. Instead that, what I can do, I can just create new file. Let me take that as data.excelsx. You can see it here. The file name is created with .excelsx means Excel file. Double click on this, you can see that file will be opened. Or instead of this, what you can do, you can go here and create an Excel file. And you can specify the Excel file name as data. Once you create the Excel file here, control C and go here and you can delete this data.xls and paste it here. Yes, data.xls. And if you open this, you can see that Excel file will be opened like this. This is an empty Excel file. In the worksheet, you'll have multiple sheets like this. Every sheet will have rows and columns. So ultimately, we'll have multiple cells. Let me close this. I need to specify the location of this. So right click on this, copy path or reference, copy absolute path, and you can specify like this. This is the absolute path of this Excel file. So in the C, you have users. In the users, you have Dell. In the Dell, you have Python projects. In the Python projects, you have Python practice folder, project. In the project, you have data to folder. In the data to you have data.excel file, nothing but Excel file. In order to work with Excel files, definitely you need to specify the location of the file in this way. Then every Excel file which we discussed will be having workbook. Workbook. So workbook is equal to so in the OpenPy Excel module, I need to specify load workbook. When I say load workbook, I need to specify the location of the Excel file. I need to specify location of the Excel file. What this will do? This is an Excel file in this particular location. And you need to load that workbook. Once you load that workbook, you, you assign this to a variable. So with the help of that variable workbook, I can try to get the sheets. And Another important point, you need to be very careful. Whenever you are specifying the location like this, not only here in this class, anywhere. What the Python will do, backslash is treated as escape character. Very important, I'm writing here. Always backslash in Python, which you are seeing here, will be treated as an escape character. So 
in the path when you copy it, this is what the string is absolute path but if you specify like this see you had an error because when you specify a backslash it is treating as an escape character it is not treating as like a location absolute path so what you need to do instead of backward slash you can put another backward slash like this so if you specify double backward slash then it can assume that it is a location it is an absolute path then what is the another way suppose i can specify the same location as like this control z sorry let me copy this path again right click on data copy path or reference variable copy absolute path and you can specify that absolute path here let me comment this variable another way how to handle the locations even though you specify escape character nothing but a backslash that python should treat that as a file location how it can treat if you specify r as a prefix then this will take care of all the backslashes very important you can specify the path like this or instead of that if you specify just r as a prefix before that path it will treat that as a location so what you are doing you are just specifying the location of that file and in the workbook you will have sheets so this is the workbook i am having and in the workbook i will be having sheets i need to specify the sheet so suppose you open this particular excel file and you can see in this particular workbook you are having multiple sheets like this but i am only having or i want to do operations on sheet 1 what i can do in this workbook i am having sheet 1 so i can just specify that sheet 1 here and i can assign this to a variable nothing but sheet with the help of this sheet i can specify the row and column i can read the data i can write the data how i can read the data first thing first operation which i can perform is counting number of rows and columns first operation count number of rows and columns yes in the sheet i am having rows as well as i am having columns so for getting the row count you need to specify max row for getting column count you need to specify max column so max column means it will fetch it will return number of columns present when i say max row it will return row count whenever it is returning you can use print print of sheet dot maximum row print of sheet dot maximum column suppose there is already data in the excel in that case in which rows and columns you specified that data it will try to fetch that so let me open this excel file let me enter some dummy data if you can see it here the dummy data should be or anything you can specify like this is row 1 similarly i can drag and drop this like this row 1 row 2 row 3 row 4 row 5 row 6 and this is some dummy data which i am entering and similarly this is column 2 i can specify like this you can drag and drop like this similarly it will specify like this so any some dummy data you can enter this is the dummy data which i have entered and thereafter i am just saving this control s yes. if you can see row 1 row 2 similarly i am having row 5 in which i have the data similarly 1 2 3 4 5 6 six columns so totally six columns eight rows and six columns in which the data is present so you can close this and you can execute this
if you can see you are having total eight rows and total six columns in which the data is present yes now if i want to read each row and each column data for reading each row and column data you are having this particular format or the syntax in the sheet you can specify the cell in the cell which cell you want to read in which row and which column it is you can just specify that indexes here and you can get that value so what i am doing i'm just initializing a rows variable rows is equal to sheet dot max row similarly calls nothing but columns is equal to in the sheet you are having max column nothing but column count this will return number of rows in a variable rows and this will return maximum column in a columns variable and what i am doing i want to read each and every row and column data for that i can use for loop for iterating each and every row for r in range of you need to start from first row and you need to end it last row for that you can specify rows plus one always range function will consider end minus one you are just specifying end as rows if, are, if it is having total eight rows it will only consider seven rows but i don't want to consider seven rows but i don't i want to consider all the rows so i'm just using rows plus one similarly for c in range of you need to specify that column number as well one comma calls plus one always you should be careful whenever you are using range function and if you want to read the data in the sheet you have cell and for the cell you need to specify row and column number and you are just reading that value that's it what you can do you can just print after reading this is what you can do let me execute this if you can see it here it has printed one by one but i don't want to print it one by one i want to print it as like rows and columns so for that you can use end is equal to you can specify a space here if you can see it here it has printed in the horizontal line i don't want to print like this if you specify for each and every value in between you are having space which is specified here i don't want to print like this i don't want to print row multiple rows and in different columns yes i can use print empty print if you can see it here it is having total eight rows six columns and this is row one data row two row three four five six seven eight column one two three four five six in this way you can count number of rows you can read all rows and columns data very important very important suppose if you want to write data into the excel files how you can write only one difference is you are just reading the data in this way so instead of that you can just specify that this particular cell should be that particular data equal to data that's it so what you can do you can just go to this particular excel file and create another sheet of suppose you can give that sheet name as data and let me save this what i want to do i want to just write the data into this particular sheet how i can close this let me create another file new python file of writing data to excel how i can write yes always first thing what you need to do is you need to specify the file location and in the workbook you will be having file you need to load that these are the basic things which you want to do you need to import open by excel module and you need to specify the location of the excel file and you need to load that workbook and in the workbook you will be having sheet you need to specify that sheet so in this case not the sheet one i need to write the data to data sheet and for writing data this is the syntax in the sheet you are having cells and you need to specify in which row and which column the cell is present and 
that cell should have the value that value should be the data you need to specify the data here ultimately you need to specify row number and column number so go here and suppose i want to write the data but i want to write the data in six rows or nothing but five rows and in three columns this is my requirement how i can write five rows for range in for r in range of you need to specify in the range function i need to start from first row and i need to end at fifth row so for that 5 plus 1 it is 6 you need to specify 6 here end value similarly for c in range of you need to specify the column number as well i need to start from first column i need to end at third column and you can specify instead of 3 3 plus 1 it is equal to 4 and you can just use this particular syntax which we have written for reading the data you can use this this is the value and you, need, you can specify that value what you are doing for the cell or just passing row number as well as column number that's it and you can specify that value that value should be suppose i'm just giving some random value here welcome and after writing data you need to save that file so whenever you do any operation on the excel file at the last what you will do you will just press ctrl s in the same way after writing the data you need to press ctrl s so ctrl s is nothing but in the workbook you need to press ctrl s so for pressing ctrl s you can just use in the workbook dot save method and you can specify which file it is the file location so this is the thing which we want to do for writing the data go to excel file and if you can see there is no data in the data sheet in the excel file but in the sheet one you, you have already present for writing the data we have taken sheet one sorry for reading the data for writing the data we are just taking data sheet close this and let we execute the script if you can see process is finished it means the data is already written and saved open this excel file and if you can see the data sheet has data which is written in this way you can write the data you can read the data so right now you have seen reading the data and writing the data and that too it is the same value which we are writing but every time i don't want to write the same data into that excel file what i can do go to excel file and clear this data just for your understanding clear contents click on control yes close this and what i am doing i am just specifying the ranges for writing the data instead what you can do you can provide some static data how i can provide comment this what i can do every sheet will be having multiple cells and you need to specify row number and column number and you need to specify that value what value should be so in this case what i am doing i am just trying to enter different data in the sheet you are having multiple cells and i need to specify which row which column or column number and row number and i need to specify the data as well if you see here multiple data have been writing here just i have just specified the row number and column number that's it upon executing this file after executing you need to save that file it is automatically saved run writing data to excel file when i executed that the process is executed and if you open this excel file you can see the data multiple data is written into the data sheet of this excel file very important then suppose up to now you have seen writing the data without column names how i can write the data with column names suppose you will be having some column 1 column 2 column 3 as a column names and below the column names how i can write the data specific to that column if you can see it here let me create another uh, sheet of sheet 2 yes i will keep this and i will use this 
close this and comment this for a while. Instead of data sheet, you can specify sheet two. In the sheet two, I need to write the data with column names. So first thing, what I want to do is I need to specify what all the column names. Column one, column two, and column three. These are the column names. With the help of these column names, I need to specify the values or the data below these column names in the Excel file. How you can do? Every sheet should be having this particular columns. For doing that, you need to specify in the sheet, in the first row, and in the column number which you specify, that column name should be column one in the first iteration. In the second iteration, it should be column two. And in the second, third iteration, it should be column three. It is nothing but enumerating. That C value should start from one. And in the third iteration, it should complete the columns three should be present in that particular sheet. And suppose these columns are already written in the row one. Then I need to write the data. How I can write? From the second row onwards, I need to write the data. So after writing any data, you need to save that file. So what I'm doing, I'm just initializing the column names. You can see it here. Upon executing, the column names have been initiated. Column one, column two, column three. And these are assigned to particular cells. What I'm doing, just saying that you iterate through column number and you just specify that column name here. That's what you are seeing here. And from the second row onwards, up to third columns, I need to specify that data. From the second row onwards, my data writing should be happened. In the first row, you are having anyway column names. I don't want to disturb that. So from the second row onwards, I need to specify that column data. How you can specify? As like here, you can just specify the range. So uncomment this. And if you can see it here, you need to specify the cell row number and the column number, and you need to specify that value. I'm just giving some random value here. So from the second row onwards, I need to write the data and up to six rows, definitely six plus one, seven, I need to specify it here. And three columns, yes, one comma, three plus one, it is four. If you can see it here, if you close this and execute the script again, if you can see it, that the script has been executed successfully and Open this data.xls and you can see in the sheet two of this workbook, you will be having column names and below the column names, you will be having the data. Very important. In this way, you can write the data, you can read the data.